Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kokumlemle in Accra on digital address GA09933411. It's broadcasting live on Joy 99.7 FM, also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by Telesol 4G, proudly Ghanaian, Telesol, just stay touch, UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, Digibank, Let's Go and Mac Autopads Ghana with you for the long run in this edition government under pressure to deal with fast depreciating city as various trade associations serve notice of pushing the burden to consumers. People's capital is getting eroded because you Meanwhile, the Association of Ghana Industries is demanding suspension of the VAT straight levies introduced by the finance minister. Condition of class 2 girl who was sexually abused worsens as she has now been provisionally diagnosed with a spinal injury. I was listening to Joy FM and you are a man with ch ch children and daughters and you are doing this to somebody's daughter. Pedophiles, he's sick. This guy must not teach our children. We have more as Apostle General of the Royal House Chapel International promises to take the cost of her treatment in the hospital. Also, secondary schools across the country have begun receiving fresh students to begin the double track system. We find out if the process has been smooth so far when we touch base with our correspondents. <laughs> And later, hundreds of Ghanaians thronged the Accra International Conference Centre to pay their last respect to the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan amidst concerns about the covered caskets. He happened to be the uh, leader of a small group of students who were protesting uh, perhaps more loudly than others. And this came to the uh, notice of the headmaster, Bartels. And we tell you how he grew up to become a UN boss and in sports. Yeah, incoming UN boss. <laughs> the ex Black Stars captain CK O'Connor has been talking on the mentality and attitude of the Black Stars players after last week's defeat to Kenya in the qualifier to the Africa Cup of Nations in 2019. And that's coming up later, plus more here on the Midday News with me, MFA Apau. Details shortly. And in our very first story, there's growing demand on government by various organizations that the fast depreciating city be addressed. The Ghana Union of Traders Association, GUTA, the Importers and Exporters Association and the Spare Parts Dealers Association have all served notice of a possible hike in prices of goods and services to make up for the high cost of doing business. Join News Checks at various trading points in the crash show. The value of the city to the dollar is hovering around 4.85 Ghana cities, with some open traders selling the dollar at 5 Ghana cities. My colleague Ifwa Evans Chinri has been visiting various uh, trading points and will join us shortly. But first, let's hear what the various trade associations make of the state of the city. Uh, Joseph Paddy is chairman of the Spare Pass Dealers Association. It's not helping business, it's not helping importation. And we know, you know, we don't produce spare pass in Ghana. If we're to be producing spare pass, then we have even talking about the foreign exchange. But since we import spare pass, it's not helping business. Because the cost of that. Uh, now that the, the dollar against the city is about 5.0 in the black market, so you you go to the uh, uh, the port to go and clear your goods. They use maybe 4.7 to calculate for you. The next month, the next week you go, they use 4.9. So it, 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 because it's not stable, it's difficult to do projection as a businessman, and it's not helping business. Okay. And, and secondly, too, people's capital is getting eroded because you change their dollar at the rate of 4.5. After you're selling your goods, now it's moved to 4.7. So you need another top-up. So people's capital is going down day by day, and uh, it's not a healthy part. Joseph Paddy is chairman of the Spare Pass Dealers Association. Our executive secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association, Samson and Sakia Wingobit, is warning of impending financial crisis if the city is not stabilized. The pegging of our dollar, as well, the city to the dollar, is very, very paramount. It has come to a time that the government, whether they like it or not, they need to do something before it gets out of hand. They need to okay. say $5 now, it is enough. Let's make it for the next six months. Let's hold it for the next three months. So that traders can make projections. Traders can do proper budgeting. I don't know that. I don't know where we are going to ahead of the West. It's a disaster. 
Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association, Samson and Saki Awingo bit there. But my, my colleague, like I said, Ifwa Evans Chinri, has been touring some uh, trading points and joins us now with some details. So, Ifwa, uh, what have the traders been saying about the state of the city? MFI visited um, some Forex Bureau and banks, and the rates were quite similar. Mm. There was 4.85, 4.84, and 4.82. And one thing runs through. All the people I spoke with say they are deeply affected uh, mm -hmm. by the CD depreciation. One woman tells me how this is making it very difficult to pay her children's school fees and buy their school items. Other al others also spoke about their general impressions. They say it has affected the economy and it's making life very difficult for many mm -hmm. Ghanaians. Uh, they are not the least excited about it. Was aiming to buy and selling. Today you go and buy this. The next day you go, or the next two days, actually the price that it goes up abnormally. When you have a supplier maybe outside, say China or Dubai, and then you have to pay them. Maybe what you paid this week, the dollar was at 4.9. Then in just a week's time, the dollar is now at probably 4.95 or even five cities, as we've seen recently. I was to pay my child's school fees, and I, 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 you know, I found out there was a huge increase. And that's, uh, you know, the dollar was to be blamed for that. The rates, the increase in the rates was to blame for that. Some uh, traders there or some uh, consumers there speaking to my colleague Ifo Evans Chinri. Now, still on issues relating to the economy, the Association of Ghana Industries is demanding an immediate suspension of the implementation of the 5% national health insurance and get fund levies. Finance Minister Ken Oferiata, while presenting the mid year budget review, announced the two components of that are now strict levies. The association is warning that its implementation will significantly impact the purchasing power of consumers as they estimate that retail prices will go up by up to 20%. Here are extracts of a letter written by the AGI to the finance minister. Most businesses in Ghana have wide distribution channels which typically run from manufacturer to distributor to wholesaler to retailer. The compounding impact of the 5% straight levy cost through the various value chains sampled shows a price inflation to consumers of 15 to 20%. Manufacturers are disadvantaged as other businesses covered under the 3% VAT flat rate scheme will not suffer the unclaimed VAT under the new straight regime. This places additional tax burden on already tax compliant local manufacturers. We request your good offices to hold off the implementation of the 5% street levy in its current state to allow for us to address the concerns raised in order to safeguard businesses and livelihoods. You have the extracts from a letter written by the AGI to the finance minister. They want more consultation on this before the implementation. Of course, we'll get some reactions uh, from government as and when we are able to raise them on the line. But away from that, the condition of the nine-year-old girl who was sexually abused has worsened as she has been provisionally diagnosed with a spinal injury. The victim says she fell when she tried to flee from her teacher who was inserting his fingers into her vagina. In a sermon at his church, the Apostle General of the Royal House Chapel International Reverend Sam Kranji Ankara condemned the actions of the teacher, saying he's not fit to teach. The founder of the Royal House Chapel International has also promised to pay the full medical bills of the victim. Family of the victim had earlier complained they did not have money to pay for the girl to undergo treatment. I was listening to Joy FM and a certain nine-year-old girl has been defiled by a teacher. And you are a man with chunk children and daughters and you are doing this to somebody's daughter the girl can't walk they need money for hospitalization and for i couldn't call joy fm yesterday so if you work there tell them i want to take care of that girl's uh, medical bills <laughs> nine years old nine oh, look. What is this? And the teacher doesn't know that he has brought damnation upon himself because whatsoever a man soweth, that's what you read. The psychologists have a word for that teacher. They call it they call the word pedophiles. He's sick. This guy must not teach our children. 
You have the Apostle General of the Rare House Chapel International. Just so you know, the nine-year-old girl has now been diagnosed with a provisionally uh, diagnosed provisionally uh, with a spinal injury. We are told uh, provisionally diagnosed with a spinal injury as a result of the fall. You're still listening to Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. Let's turn our attention to education now, because the academic year for first-year senior high school students has started with the introduction of a new educational system, single and double track. The Ghana Education Service has already placed over 400,000 students in schools across the country with those on green track reporting from this morning. Uh, let's start off from the central region where irrespective of the track, a student has been placed by the GES. Uh, the school determine who comes in on the green or go track. This is happening at the Wesley Girls High School and the University Practice SHS in Cape Coast, where authorities say it's a better way of managing teachers and students. Let's hear from one of the school heads. We, we saw that if we were going to run the tracking system by the divisions as we were told to do, it was going to create a lot of problems. You will see that if you even after track one or A, or what do you call it, um, the gold, no, sorry, the green, you see that it will be very difficult for, for us to find enough teachers for track two or the, the gold. So we thought it wise to um, do the tracking system by program. Where program is, we run one, all the programs. You no, know, you no, know, all of them will come at the same time. Then the second time we run another program. We saw that when we do it, that we we have a better management of the number of teachers as human resource for the program than to divide them, you know, and even for the students. Uh, so let's speak to uh, my colleague Richard Kojunyako. He's been to these schools and joins us on the line with more. So, Richard, did you find out from them if they have the blessings of the GES, for instance? Come again, MFR. I I'm asking if they are doing this with the consent or the permission of the Ghana Education Service. Yes, exactly. They say that they are doing that with the blessing of the GES because when they went uh, for their meeting, they indicated to them that this is a better way of managing the situation than the tracking system currently underway. And so if you were brought into the school by the system that indicated that you are going to either be with a green category or the gold category. They are altering the system. And so um, they are looking at the relationship each course has with the other course. So, for example, home economics and science, they have some relation, their, their propensity that a teacher who teaches home economics can also teach science, or a teacher who teaches science can teach biology at the home economics. This um, applies to business and the art courses because some of them undertake economics and the others also, and uh, the art, art students also undertake economics. So it is reasonable for them to manage the situation mm. better this way mm. than the current system that is currently uh, running. But were parents and students informed ahead of time and what has been their reaction to this new development? Well, um, there were agitations initially because some, some of them brought their trunks and other things because the system had said so that they, are, they belong to the green track, only for them to be told that they do not belong to the course category that has been designed by the school. So they have to go home after the orientation period. And so even if you were with the gold track, mm -hmm. then you would have to start school tomorrow. And so for Wesley girls, I interacted with some of the teachers. They are starting academic or um, I mean, strict teaching tomorrow. And so that is how the categorization has been done. Uh, as you may be aware, some of the parents and the students might be very apprehensive because they have uh, fine-tuned their mind that mm -hmm. indeed they are for gold track or for their green track. Green so track. Mm -hmm. for the system or for the school to alter it this way, then it, it was very heavy for them to understand. But when this morning they came, the forum was organized okay. and the system was explained very well to them and they seem to be at peace with the system now. Richard Kojonyako there from the central region. Let's head to the Volta region where correspondent Ivy Setoji is stationed at the Komboni Senior High Technical School. Ivy, what's the situation where you are? Well, with the Komboni uh, Technical Vocational Institute in Strakopa, uh, some students from last year who completed last year uh, are there uh, here and they are unable uh, to get admission. They are worried because uh, they were hinted that they may not be able to get admission. So that is what is happening. The parents of these children are very worried. Uh, aside that, uh, everything is going on smoothly, except that the rain has disrupted everything. It got started raining uh, a while ago, and it has uh, stalled the process.
But what about the other schools you visited? Um, what's the situation at, at those other schools? Yeah, the other schools in the Keta municipality and the uh, South Keta North, uh, everything is going on smoothly. Also, a sub that uh, some students from is similar. Some students from uh, last year uh, are also there to to be admitted. Mm. Now, uh, Love FM so him interior has been speaking with headmaster of Kumasi Academy Senior High School, Reverend Sylvester Osewusu, who says the process has generally uh, been smooth. We have at the gate, we have personnel who are welcoming the parents. And then we have labeled all the centers for the various courses. So when you come, we have personnel who will be directing you to where your courses are. We also made some classrooms available so parents will not be standing in the sun standing if it's raining so they all have the classroom with chairs seated and then we call them one after the other and they are all okay there are some who come with challenges about this track and the status i also set up a solution committee where they also list the name and attend and speak to them so for now we are ready we are even getting ready to get lunch for those who have come early uh, you heard the, uh, the headmaster of uh, the Kumasi Academy Senior High School there speaking to my colleague on him in Terrier, back here in Accra. Nancy Emefa Juadosi is on the beach. He's visited some schools and joins us on the line as well. Nancy, what did you find? Right, so my first stop was at the Accra High Senior High School. Fortunately for me, when I got there, I met the GSPR, Cassandra Chuma, and she tells me that she was there to actually assess how far um, students are able to have access to the registration. And she was actually very satisfied with how the coordination was at the Accra High Senior High School because they had divided it into the various programs. So if you went for if the school gave you business, you have a queue that you join for business. And those who had self-placement also had a special queue. So they had everything in order. I'm currently at Laboni high school and um, i've seen uh, quite some frustrated parents i just spoke to one whose child got um the gold card and he tells me that he's been here for four times and he hasn't been attended to and so he, he has been told again to come back next week and so those on the gold card are actually having difficulties but for those on the green card um, registration so far has been good MFA. Nancy M. F. Adjadosi, but she's also been speaking to the pro of the ghana education service cassandra uh, cassandra chu ampofo no cause for alarm and everything is moving on smoothly. So for here, I would say that everything is on course and we are expecting. And, and let me also use the platform to say that even if till now you still have not printed your placement form, there's no cause for alarm. We'll still give them the time to be able to I mean, get onto the system. No qualified person will be cut out. A lot of parents are frustrated or agitated because they have not been able to even do a self placement or they have not been able to um, assess the system to get to you know whether they are on that green or gold or in this school, even though we are real clean or as we begin today, we can still move on this week and then get everything done. Thank you. You have the, the PR of the Ghana Education Service, but let's stay a while longer on education because uh, we have weak structures, uh, lack of teaching and learning materials, as well as untrained professional child educators are more or, or some of the major factors hindering the enrollment of children uh, of school going age across the country. In some communities, there are no classroom blocks at all for KG pupils uh, to address the challenge and promote right age enrollment. Deputy Education Minister Dr. Yao Seyeduchum tells Joy News government is partnering with UNICEF to build more kindergarten blocks as well as train child instructors. There's more in the following report as part of our Enroll Me Now campaign. Those were the cries of parents of some six kg pupils who lost their lives when their classroom block collapsed on them. All six children aged between four and six sadly bore the brunt of the inactions of state actors towards the education. Schools under trees and weak school structures are common in many parts of the country. The situation in some areas is discouraging general school enrollment and right age enrollment. Dr. Educhum is the Deputy Education Minister. The, the numbers for early grades education enrollment is increasing. In some places, the net enrollment ratio is declining. In other communities, it's increasing. Overall, the gross enrollment ratio is increasing tremendously. In a bid to address the challenge, Dr. Duchum tells Joy News, government is constructing a number of preschool facilities to encourage school enrollment. When we came to power, we surveyed all primary schools across the country and realized that 
we have a lot a bit close to 1,171 okay. primary schools without cages. As I speak with you, there are 72 of them under construction at various stages of construction. We know for a fact that 50 of them will be available in September for occupants. That's uh, Dr. Yao Seduchum ending that report found by MFA Eli at Tiamwa on Enromi now. <laughs> Still to come here on the Midday News, hundreds of Ghanaians throng the Accra International Conference Center to pay their last respect to the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan amidst concerns about the covered casket. We have details and also hear uh, from some persons who have thronged the Accra International Conference Center uh, to, to pay their last respects to uh, Mr. Kofi Annan. There's more when we return from this break. That is a sweet sound of excellence. That is a sound from Mac. Yes, Mac Ghana is the number one distributor of the world's best quality Isuzu and Chevrolet vehicles in Ghana. Isuzu tracks from 1.5 tons to heavy duty vehicles. Isuzu buses from 15 to 33 seaters, double and single cabin pickup, available in automatic and manual transmissions. We also stock a wide range of Chevy cars, from SUVs, sedans, and small cars, fully loaded with exquisite specifications. All our range of Vehicle stand out due to its high fuel efficiency, safety, luxury, spacious interior, world class delivery, and after sales servicing. What's more, we offer flexible payment terms to meet your pockets. Mark Ghana is a sole distributor for Isuzu trucks and pickups, as well as all range of Chevrolet cars in Ghana. Call us on 0302 813 919 in Accra or 0242 039 550 in Kumasi. Visit our website. MarkGhana.com. Mark Ghana with you for the long run. Imagine having the bear that gives light, plays music, powers your phone, and gives you the viewing pleasure of your television. Now you can have all that with the unique invention of young entrepreneur Akuaba Nana Akumia. Have a dream. Then I decided to bring this out. So it took me like two years before I invented all this. Some people there, they have a lot of money so that they can occupy all this. I just, I just combine all this for them so that they can get easy. You can have your lighting system here. This electronic bed, you have power fluctuation. In case of over voltage, you're going to cut it. And the sound system too, I fix it all myself. And the television, I fix it all myself. Hamper yourself on the electronic bed this week as we bring you the story of Akua Baakumia on the Joy Business Fan. The Joy Business Fan on TV, radio, online and on the ground. It's powered by Joy Business and supported by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. You're welcome back. You're still listening to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. It's time now to take the latest from the world of sports. Read one. Yes, former Black Stars captain C.K. Akono says the current team will put lessons from their lame performance in the defeat to Kenya on Saturday to good use when the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers return next month. Ghana were shocked 1-0 by the Harambe Stars in Nairobi and the players have received a lot of stick for what it was said to be an uninspiring display. Akono believes um, and admits that the attitude on the match day was poor, but expects the team to bounce back. The fact that they, they performed that, that manner was, was disappointing, was shocking, especially to the technical men. Because they have seen him, they've been with them, and once you, you, you start to do something, you, you see a lot of progression. Then you don't expect to have a back. Uh, backslide, you know, in a way where, in a way of performance, you know, and I think the way they performed from looking at the previous matches that they played compared to this one, I think it was poor. And I can understand uh, Tanko was furious, disappointed, you know, uh, and spoke the way he spoke. I mean, it's clear a message. But I, I'm sure the players themselves know that hey, this wasn't the best, and so uh, I won't be surprised they will go very, very high when in their next match, you know, and so. We don't need to panic too much. You had C.K. Akono, former Black Stars captain, who is also now a coach.
That's your sports uh, with Ridwan Ibrahim Asante. Now, hundreds of Ghanaians have thronged the Accra International Conference Centre to pay their last respect to the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. But some mourners who came to the AICC are raising concerns that they were unable uh, to view the remains as the casket was covered with a Ghana flag. We'll bring you uh, those concerns shortly. But before then, let's hear uh, some tributes from his former schoolmates who've been speaking to Fifi Kumsen. Kofi Annan Secondary School in Fantapim was founded by British Methodist missionaries in 1876. And here is where many of the stories about Mr. Annan's political leadership, fun and pun, started. At school, there was nothing to distinguish Kofi from any other child in the school. Dr. Andrew Anane Akutu, a retired civil servant of the UN, was Mr. Annan's schoolmate at Infantipim. He remembers so vividly the time on campus back in the day. He was a very good athlete, but he was a very good sprinter. Okay. And later on, uh, I learned when he went to the States and so on, he was even competing in the States as a sprinter. While on campus, Kofianen was deeply involved in the political leadership, becoming the opposition leader of the mock parliamentary elections of Infantipim. That earned him the nickname Domo. For more political parties and elected members to assemblies and so on. And uh, Kofi was uh, um, elected the deputy leader of the opposition. <laughs> and uh, in those days, opposition people were called generally Domo. So Kofi acquired the nickname Domo up to his passing amongst our close friends. We called him Domo. One of Kofi Annan's noticeable achievements at Infantipim was to lead a protest against poor quality of food in the dining hall. He happened to be the uh, leader of a small group of students who were protesting uh, perhaps more loudly than others. And this came to the uh, notice of the headmaster, Bartels. F.L. Bartels then called him to his office and said, I understand you have something to do with all the strike nonsense. If you have an issue to discuss, come to me and we'll discuss it man to man. You are reasonably intelligent. Given the chance, you may become a useful member of society. That was the prophecy. So that's, that's an excerpt of a Joy News documentary looking back on the life of Busumuru Kofian. And the full documentary, of course, will air on Thursday on the Super Morning Show right here on Joy 99.7 FM. We can now take a brief look at the life of Mr. Kofian. The world that I'm working to create is a world that should be of interest to all of us. A man conscious of the lives of the millions around the world, ready to touch the very core of humanity in the best way possible. I'm working to create a world that is stable, that is peaceful. He reformed the UN's bureaucracy and worked to combat HIV, especially in Africa. It's going to be a disaster for our children and our grandchildren. We are all in the same boat. Though he's been on the receiving end of some harsh criticism for some of the world's atrocities for what critics described as a UN's slow response to some crisis, the late Nobel Peace Prize winner held his head high. It was our collective failure. We all failed Rwanda. But the world went numb at news of his passing last August. Kenya's former premier, Raila Odinga, will not forget his role in leading a peace accord when his country was on the brink. You heard there, uh, that documentary there, we're looking back on the life of uh, Busumuru Kofian, and we'll bring you the full uh, package there in our subsequent bulletins. Let's head to the Accra International Conference Centre, where hundreds have thronged uh, the premises to pay their last respects to Kofian, and my colleague Maxwell Ababa uh, joins us on the line. So Maxwell, there have been concerns about why the casket is covered. W what really are those concerns? Hello, Maxwell. Yeah, hello, I'm I'm asking about uh, some concerns some have raised about why the casket is covered. Well, um, uh, a lot of the people that I spoke to were full of friends from the British uh, Secretary of the Union General. But some of them who came here to pay their last respect have left disappointed because they said they were unable to view um, the remains of the former Secretary General because it was covered with the Ghana flag. One of them is um, a political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, Ran for example. As young people, we are all aspiring um, to be able to shine not only within our country,
but um, to also shine out there within the globe so that the world will know what Ghana has for it. Something that I'm not too happy about is that our culture, in our culture, when you're talking about filing past a dead person, um, what happens is that you open, you want people to have the opportunity to view the body. But this is COVID. So you hear that, Professor Ransford Jampo, of course, uh, we'll get more uh, because we've heard from the planning committee also. We'll bring you their reactions. And also the Crops Research Institute of the CSIR will be naming a newly released sweet potato variety after the late UN Secretary General. And what's trending on social media? There's more talk on Kofi Annan maps. Yes, and at Sam underscore one says, I've been watching a lot of Kofi Annan's videos. The way the man answered question is God mode. There are times I actually felt like they gave him the questions and he had the answers before coming. <laughs> Smart man and a man of peace something i need to master and the last tweet is from at noble one gift yeah, who says another african king gone it's really a cold world we live in and that's it for the midday news i am mfa apau there's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com have a good afternoon with mtn protect this 